The Israelites had been in Egypt for over 400 years. They had been held captive and were enslaved to do work for the Egyptians. They had all but given up hope that they would ever be rescued. One day, a man from the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and the couple gave birth to a baby boy. They hid their baby because the Pharaoh of Egypt had ordered that all male Israelite babies were to be killed. When they could hide him no longer, they placed the baby in a basket and set it on the Nile. The daughter of Pharaoh found the basket and took the baby boy in. She named the baby Moses and raised the child as her own. When Moses had grown up, he was watching his people working and witnessed an Egyptian guard beating an Israelite. In his anger, he killed the Egyptian and as a result had to leave Egypt. Forty years later, God spoke to Moses through the burning bush on Mount Horeb and sent Moses back to Egypt on a mission to set his people free from their bondage. Moses went to Pharaoh and told him to let the Israelites go, but Pharaoh refused. God began to show his awesome power by releasing the ten plagues upon the Egyptians. First, he caused the water of the Nile River to turn to blood. Then came the plague of frogs, followed by the plague of gnats, and then the plague of flies, and the plague on livestock, the plague of boils, the plague of hail, the plague of locusts, and finally, the plague of darkness. But no matter how terrible these plagues were, Pharaoh still refused to let the people of Israel go. God would send one last final plague upon the Egyptians, and this plague would be so devastating that even Pharaoh would no longer be able to stand in defiance of the will of God. God would also give special instructions to the people of Israel to ensure that they were kept safe from the effects that this last plague would bring upon the people of Egypt. Even after suffering through the first nine plagues, Pharaoh still refused to let the Israelites go. God would now send one final plague upon them, the plague on the firstborn. God instructed Moses to go to Pharaoh with one final message. When Moses arrived, he began to speak to Pharaoh. This is what the Lord says. About midnight, I will go through Egypt. Every firstborn son in Egypt will die. From the firstborn son of Pharaoh, who sits on the throne, to the firstborn son of the female slave, who is at her hand mill and all the firstborn of the cattle as well. There will be loud wailing throughout Egypt, worse than there has ever been, or ever will be again. But for Israel, the Lord had a different message. He would tell his people that even though this terrible final plague would ravish the people of Egypt, he would protect them. Moses went before the people of Israel and spoke what the Lord instructed him to say. Go at once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the basin and put some of the blood on the top and on both sides of the door frame. None of you should go out of the door of your house until morning. When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top and the sides of the door frame, and will pass over the doorway, and he will not permit the destroyer to enter your houses and strike you down. God also told Israel that this night would be one that they would long remember. The Lord gave them instructions concerning how they were to celebrate this event and pass the memory of it down to each new generation. 
Obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance for you and your descendants. When you enter the land that the Lord will give you as he promised, observe this ceremony. And when your children ask you, what does this ceremony mean to you? Then tell them, it is a Passover sacrifice to the Lord who passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. And so it was that the first Passover came, but it would not be the last time that God made a way where there was no way. Over 1,000 years after this first Passover night, God would once again save his people, and this time he would do it once and for all. Over 1,000 years after the first Passover took place in Egypt, a group of Jews met to celebrate the Passover feast. But this Passover would prove to be a very special one. Jesus, the Son of God, the promised Messiah, had come. He was with his disciples as the Passover celebration drew near. He knew what was about to take place and began to lead his disciples in the way they would need to go. Matthew 26 verses 17 through 30 tells us this. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparation for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says my appointed time is near. I'm going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him, one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. In less than a day, Jesus our Savior would be crucified on a cross. He took our place and paid the penalty for our sin, not because of anything we have done to deserve it, but because He first loved us. Today, as we celebrate the Passover, we not only remember the night when Jesus delivered the nation of Israel from bondage, we also remember that God our Father sent His one and only Son to die for us so that we could be delivered from sin and death and brought into his glorious light. Praise the Lord.